Hey everybody, it's Alex with Engineering Applied. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the projected view command found within an Autodesk Inventor drawing file. If you want more easy to understand and practical content like this, made by an experienced engineer like myself, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any helpful content like this in the future. If you're looking for a specific function, check the description for timestamps. And if you don't find what you're looking for in this video, make sure you check out the other videos in my Autodesk Inventor series playlist because I know you'll find exactly what you need there. Let's get started. Okay, everybody. So here we are in our drawing file. The first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and drop a base view into our drawing environment. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll go ahead and click on base here and we'll load this assembly file that I've made prior to this video. Go to default and okay. So there we go. We have our base view dropped into our drawing. Now we can start creating projections of this view. If you'd like to learn more about the base view command, I encourage you to go watch my video on that subject. Moving right along here, all we need to do to use the projected view command is go up to the create portion of the ribbon, click on projected, and then we want to designate the base view of interest or the starting view in which we're projecting these views off of. So in this case, we only have this one view in our drawing environment. So we'll just click on this view. And as I hover above it, you'll see I get my projected view uh, for this area up here. Now, bear in mind, I'm using third angle projection. You can change the setting and I'll get to that later in the video. However, when I hover my mouse cursor off of this particular side, of the base view, I get the projected view that corresponds to that particular side based on whether I'm using third angle or first angle projection. Okay, so again, in this case, I'm using third angle projection. So I'm seeing this side of the part. Okay, so I can left click to drop a projection. And I want you to notice that when I hover off of any one of these directions, there's a dashed line connecting the um, preview for the new projected view and the base view. Okay, that's telling me that this particular view is locked in alignment in that direction. Okay, so now I can left click here and drop that view there. I can left click above here and below here to drop those views. And I can also drop isometric views. So let's say, for example, I want to drop this isometric view up here in the top right hand corner with this particular orientation. All I have to do is left click. So you hover over in the um, you know corners of the base view and it will snap to that isometric view. But I want you to notice these are not snapped into alignment. You can move these wherever you'd like. OK, so we'll left click and drop that there. Now that we have all of our views in place, all we need to do is right click on our mouse and then left click on create. OK, and once we do that, it drops all of our views into the drawing environment. Now, I'd like to take a moment to show you how we can change some of the display properties associated with these views. Currently, everything is shaded. However, I only want the isometric view to be shaded, and then I want everything else to be unshaded without hidden lines. So all I need to do is I can either change each view individually by double clicking on the view, right clicking on the view and going to edit view, right clicking on the corresponding view in the model browser and going to edit view or I can double click on the corresponding view in the model browser. Okay, so um, once we get to that menu, we can go down to the style section. And one thing I want you to note here is that it's currently set to style from base. So I double clicked on the projected view. Okay, and what it's doing is it's currently picking up the style from the base view. So in this case, since I want all of these projected views to take the style of the base view, all I would do is double click on the base view and change the style of this one. So I'll unshade that and click OK. And as you can see, all of these projected views, with the exception of the isometric view, have taken on this style. Now, that leads me to my next topic, and that is the differences between the isometric projections, okay, the projections off of the corners of the base view, and these projections here, the top, bottom, left, and right projections, okay? So as you saw already, these projections are snapped in alignment, okay? I cannot pull these to the left or the right. This one will only go up and down, and this one will only go left and right. It will not go up and down, okay? So these are snapped in alignment to this base view. However, this isometric view is not aligned to that base view, so I can move it wherever I want. So I can pull it over here and down here. It really doesn't matter, okay? So that is one of the differences. Another difference is that these projections here will inherit both the display settings and the scale. Now, we already saw the inheritance of the display settings when this base view was shaded, okay? However, when it comes to the scaling, when we change the scale of this base view, let's just change it to 2 to 1 and click OK, Notice how all of these projected views will follow suit. Now, you can, of course, disable that by clicking on the projected view of interest 
and um, unchecking this box called scale from base. OK, so now it will no longer generate this scaling based on the base view scale. We'll click OK and let's change our base view. Let's move this down a little bit. All right, we'll double click on that and let's change this back to one to one. We'll Click OK. Everything else follows suit except for this one because we unchecked that scale from base option. Now, taking a look at this isometric view or this isometric projection that I have here, I want to point out that initially it does inherit the display settings and the scaling settings of the base view. However, once it's already created and I change the scaling here, so we'll change that to one half scale and click OK. It stays the same. OK, so it doesn't follow suit like these other ones do. So if I double click on this, you'll notice that I don't have access to the option to scale from base. OK, so we have to manually scale this one separately once it's created. Now let's go ahead and project another view off of this base view here. So we'll just project this isometric view. Notice how it copies that same display style and scaling style. But if I change this, so we'll change this to shaded and we'll change it to a one to one scale. There we go. So all of these attributes will change along with this base view, but this one stays the same. Now, if you'd like to break the alignment of these views here, all you have to do is right click on that and then go up to alignment here and then go down to break. And when you do that, it'll put this little reference here off of the base view to show you which direction you are looking at this particular view, because if you were to do this, Theoretically, you could move this view over to this side of the page. Um, that wouldn't be something that you typically want to do because it can become confusing for the reader if these little notations are not there. Now, um, if you did want to leave it on the left side of the page somewhere, but get rid of these, all you would have to do is double click on this view and then go to display options. And then you want to uncheck the box called definition and base view. OK, and when we click OK, it removes that definition. OK, and then, of course, we can double click on this view, change the label here by going to this little pencil. And then you can also change um, the text in this box here. And then once you have all of those changes, you can click OK. And uh, so that is how you break the views. OK, but if you want to realign it, what you can do is you can right click on that view again, go to alignment. And then you want to click on horizontal and then you want to click the view that you want to align it to. OK, and so once we do that, it snaps in alignment with that base view again. Now, before I go ahead and finish up this video, I want to take a moment to show you how we can change our projection style. So all we need to do is go to the Manage tab, click on Styles Editor, and then at the top here under Standard, you want to click on the standard you're currently using, and then you'll get this window that pops up. Go to the View Preferences tab and then select your projection type of interest. So you can see currently I'm using third angle. Let's try first angle. So I'll click on that, save and close. Now let's go ahead and project some more views. So I'll select the space view. Now notice how the projections are different, OK? So projecting the views in those same directions are giving me first angle projections instead of third angle. So that's how we change our projection style. And if you're interested in learning about all of the individual commands housed within these drawing view windows, I encourage you to watch my video on the base view command because I cover all of these little options in detail. That's all for this segment of the Autodesk Inventor Drawing Creation Module, where I gave you an overview of the projected view command. I really hope that you found this tutorial to be helpful and that you put what you've learned into practice so you can continue developing your skills as you work your way through these lessons. Also, before you watch the next video in the series, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on future content that will help you create the future you want for yourself. And of course, don't hesitate to leave a comment or reach out via my website contact page and let me know if there's anything else you'd like to learn about or see on this channel. I really appreciate you choosing to stop by and learn with me and I'll see you again soon.